Okay, hello everyone. You know, today we're going to look at the key features of quadratic functions. And we're starting a new unit. We are specifically going to look at quadratic functions for a while. In today's objective, to identify the key features of a quadratic function. Guys, we're going to do this today and tomorrow. I just want to show you this is a quadratic right here. It's shaped like a U. Right, a quadratic has an x squared. All right, it has a degree of 2. x squared. That's what creates the U shape. Today's essential question, what are the key features of a quadratic function? All right, again, remember quadratic, it has a degree of 2. So it looks something like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. Again, b and c can be 0, but a cannot be 0. a can be 1. But it cannot be zero or else the quadratic goes away. Then it's not a quadratic. But the B and the C, they can be zero. All right, again, we graph a quadratic. It's symmetrical. And it's shaped like a U or an upside down U. It can be that if the A is negative. It can be upside down. Guys, right, again, what's a quadratic parent function? We talked about this with absolute value. The parent function of a quadratic looks like this. f of x equals x squared. Right, it's the simplest function in the quadratic function family. In the graph of the function, the curve is called a, par a parabola or a parabolic curve. A quadratic is a parabolic curve. In the vertex, it's the minimum or maximum value of the function. The vertex comes down, we talked about this before, with absolute value. Where it flattens out and changes direction. And the axis of symmetry is what intersects the vertex and divides the parabola in half. All right, in this case, the y-axis is the axis of symmetry, where x equals 0. In this case... But that's not always true. This is just where y equals x squared. And you can see the xy coordinates over here. Right. And the vertex is 0, 0 for the parent function. Axis of symmetry is x equals 0. The parabola opens up. Guys, how does the value of the leading coefficient a affect the graph of the quadratic parent function. That's what we're going to first just talk about here today. That a in front, right there, how does it change? How the parabola looks. Well, guys, again, if you kind of remember how it worked with absolute value, when a is less than 0, it flips it upside down. Now, when the absolute value of a, in other words, when a is, is smaller than 1, all right, the graph is wider because it goes up slower. And that's also true, like, if, if A is a half. That's also true if A is, like, negative a half. It's just upside down, but it's still wider. So in, in that case, it's going down slower than it normally would. And if A is greater than 1, the graph is narrower. It goes up faster. Right? Or down faster if it's like negative 6. All right? Then it's going down fast. It's narrow. All right. A quadratic function, again, we've talked about this before. It has an interval of increase and an interval of decrease. It changes direction at the vertex. As you can see, if it's upside down, it is increasing on this side. Think as x gets big, this is going up. As x gets big, move from left to right. As x gets big, it's increasing. But now here, as x gets big, now it's coming down. It's pointing down. The y values are actually decreasing here as x gets big right here. All right, when the u is right side up like this, as x gets bigger, 
Again, right here, it's coming down as X gets bigger. This is the decreasing interval down here until it hits 1. Then it starts to increase. All right, and again, we've looked at that before. Again, over what interval is the f of x equals 4x squared increasing? And what is it decreasing? You know, you can use a table of values and just look at the values of y. Again, as x increases, what is y doing? Well, in this case, if you notice, guys, y is decreasing from 16 to 14 to 0. Here it's decreasing. And the vertex is at 0, 0. That's the turning point where it changes from decreasing to increasing because now we go from 0 to 4 to 16. All right, here is where it's increasing. Also, guys, I want to review something about this A. We talked about a rate of change. Remember, a linear function has a constant rate of change. You know, but a quadratic function has a constantly changing rate of change. In other words, a quadratic, the rate of change is changing. But it's changing at a constant rate. It's changing at a constant rate. All right, now for positive intervals, the greater the value of a, the greater the average rate of change. So in this case, when it's 2x squared, this red quadratic, the curve is going up faster, of course, twice as fast. So in this case, when x is 1, the blue goes up to 1. But the red goes up to 2. Guys, and the ratio of the a values, so like 2 over 1, because this here, the A is 1. It's the same as the ratio of the average rates of change for any interval at all. All right, this again goes from 0, look at the red, from 0 to 2. That's the average rate of change is 2, up 2 over 1. But the blue is 1, up 1 over 1. All right which is the same ratio as 2 over 1. And that is going to be the same if we went between 1 and 2. <clears throat> between 1 and 2, the blue goes up 1, 2, 3. You see that right there? Up 3. Up over 1 and then up 3. Okay? So the red goes up 6 over 1. Up one, two, three, four, and it goes off. We can't see it. Five, six. But the reason you know that it's six is that it ends up going. Look, guys, if I put two in where x is, two squared is four times two is eight. So we started at two. We're going to end up here at eight, and that's up by six. All right, that's it. Guys, we are going to look at axis of symmetry. At the vertex, a little closer tomorrow, all right? Today, I want you to focus on the, what the parent function is, the idea that it's a parabolic curve, all right? What the, again, what the vertex is and the axis of symmetry. We'll look closer at those two things tomorrow. All right, that's it. Thanks.